Welcome, people, as we get ready to get started for Biblical. Oh, I forgot to put that this is uh, episode 12. Yep, I'll, so I'll go ahead and add that on there. This is episode 12, and we're going to be talking about the power of empathy. Um, and as we get ready to bring the co-host on, it'll let me know as soon as he's ready. So please uh, like, share, comment. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, this is a live dialogue discussion where we like to interact with the audience and just give you something to uplift and edify your life and your day. So. Andre's trying to come in the room now. I got my tea and I'm ready. So I'll talk to you a little bit. Uh, what's up? Well, hello. The profound minister Andre is in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, welcome. Look at you. Uh, I'm really excited about today's show, but, you know, it's funny. I was thinking, like, as we're starting, I think it's always good that we start the show, like, by talking about each other's day. I mean, that's one of the ways to practice empathy, right? Like, how are you doing? How are it you is. doing? It is. I see my friend, Jen, um, well, I like to call, well, she doesn't know this, but I call her um, Little Munk Munchkin. But um, <laughs> but I was stationed with her in um, Kuwait. Um, Janelle is on. Um, so it's good to see her. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing really good. Um, I saw, so, well, I'm a little bit annoyed um, about something. Um, because I... Um, Today was my day to turn in my um, my cable box because I'm canceling cable. I think I told you that, Brandon, yeah. that I'm canceling cable and I moved over to YouTube TV. Um, so I go over to the um, I go over to the spectrum to turn it in, and they so they they go into the system and they tell me, honey, that they are unable to cancel my cable like <laughs> if they had an I'll be like I'm like excuse me so they were like basically saying like uh they're they're, they're getting an error message when they go in to cancel so they told me to right now mind you this is the day before my cycle ends like my my billing mm -hmm. cycle this is the day before my billing cycle ends and I was like okay I will be back so they gave me the number to customer service mm -hmm. Tell me why I called customer service, and I was on hold for an hour and a half waiting on wow. um, the cancellation specialist to. Mm -hmm. And you can't do it online. And huh? so he never, he or she never, nope. So he or she never came onto the phone, um, and I still have a cable box. So, mm -hmm. um, tomorrow after I'm done teaching LLC, um, they close at 8 p.m. I'm not leaving Spectrum until they accept my box. Mm. I'm not playing with them. They better figure out what's in that system because mm. how wh you're telling me I can't cancel my uh, my I'm, you're unable to put it into the system to cancel. That's not cool. I'm like y'all better be grateful. Y'all better be grateful. I still have Wi-Fi with you all. Like I could have just left y'all all together mm. and went to Direct TV or Comcast or whatever, but. Mm. Or, but no, I'm utilizing your Wi-Fi services, so mm. get it together. So, um, but other than that, I had a great weekend. I played frisbee and soccer with a friend of mine, um, the same friend I went um, hiking with and played frisbee with. Um, shout out to Chris um, for that. But other than that, I'm good. I'm just excited that we're here to talk about the power of empathy. Nice. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I like that we're in dark colors today. I think we're in, I mean, I don't, I mean, we both in dark I, colors yeah, today. Yeah. Um, I noticed that. that. Are you doing royal yes. purple? I should have put on a purple Hey, shirt. but you got that Hebrew blue. Um, Hebrew blue. Come through. 
Just saying. Okay. So let, let me find out we in sync and didn't even know the colors <laughs> of our shirts. So I'm with it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm doing good. I'm just um, that was my own little my own small little hiccup mm -hmm. today was with mm -hmm. that. Um, but other than that, my weekend was good. I'm ready to teach EOLC. It's my first first time on the platform teaching that. Nice. So see how that goes. That should be fun. Mm -hmm. Look at Maria. Yeah. So oh, Maria <laughs> said, y'all cute or whatever. Or oh, whatever. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much, Maria. Yeah. I try, honey. What's up, Prophet Harsel? He just joined the room. Um, this weekend has been nice. I mean, it's, it feels kind of short, um, but I'm I, but I am excited about the show. Um, Shay and I went to. I was fasting, so I added fasting back into my life. I lost eight pounds, gained two back. But it's not really. But 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 what I can tell you, it's not necessarily uh, that I'm trying to lose weight, but the mental clarity that I'm experiencing. And if I could hear prophetically and see things before, um, it's like it's 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 heightened now. I can see and feel things. If I was an empath before, and now I'm just, you know, let me take a nap so I can like, you know, because I'm hearing and seeing everything that's going on, and hopefully uh, that comes out in this show when it will, you know, when it comes to the power of empathy. And so yeah, I just added fasting back, and you know. Fasting and prayer and meditation kind of all go together. And um, Shay and I went to Texas Roadhouse yesterday and we got a free appetizer, you know, because so the restaurant had given out this envelope and was like, if you come back between these dates, you know, um, the server will open it in front of you and see what you want. So we had a free coupon, but we probably won't be going uh, back there for a while. I'm ready to cook more too. Maybe the fasting thing is like, you know, I'm ready to cook more, but it was a good meal. It was good to be like out and about a little bit. And yeah, we just decided to chill today. And we started watching the uh, new season of Greenleaf. And I was I yeah. was a little bit encouraged by it, actually. It didn't feel so drab. Don't give okay, nothing away because I haven't okay. watched it yet. Well, Don't there's one person away. who's standing up for righteousness. There's one person who is who is trying to do what's right. And that's good to see in the show. That's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah, I, I've always been into Greenleaf. Um, I think it is good that they're closing out on this season. Um, I'm, I, I, I kind of miss, um, and you don't have to give that away, but I kind of miss Latoya Luckett's character mm. on the show. Um, I really, I mean, maybe because I love Latoya Luckett and her acting. Her mm -hmm. acting is, like, impeccable. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I'm, I, um, I love... Greenleaf. So Greenleaf, is, Greenleaf gives you a perspective that um, that you don't really um, expect to see mm -hmm. on TV. If that makes sense. Um, yeah. So and you I like know, it. I'll add to that. Like I was thinking as I was watching it, watching it, like all the ratchetness and the drama behind it that goes on behind the scenes in churches, and I feel like a lot of that happens when when churches become business you know what i'm saying like when you start to run it like mm -hmm. a business now you got all these deals now everything is about money you're hiding funds you know doing illegal stuff as a non-profit and i think that's kind of how like it seeps in but then i also started thinking about the scriptures like these people were not perfect in the scripture you know what i'm saying like they did some stuff in the scripture and they was forgiven mm -hmm. in the scripture and so to see i guess if you're a person like that who tries to extrapolate everything you can from the show, I think it's, it can be a, a good thing, a humbling thing, a, a righteous thing, and point you in the right direction. Uh, what's up, Bishop Sawyer? Bishop Sawyer's on. Um, oh, Nikki, Nikki. Uh, oh, Gabby. Hey, Gabby. Gabby says, super cute, Andre. Thank you so much. Um, I'm trying to stay cute okay, in these streets. Because maybe a man is out there waiting for me, okay? <laughs> I have to still be cute. He's on the okay? way. I'm not married and boot up. I'm not married and boot up like Brandon, okay? Hey, I he's have on, to get on Brandon's He's level. on the way. <laughs> yes, I'm going to speak, speak yes. it to existence. He is on the way, yes. okay? Um, but, yeah, how, so how are things with you? Mm -hmm. I mean... How are, th how are things with you, Brandon? How, oh how has your weekend been? Oh, my what gosh, is Andre. Because, you know, I, I talked about my Andre, where weekend. have you been the last five minutes? I just talked about all of that. Well, I mean, <laughs> you gave like a... <laughs> 
where you been? I feel like you didn't give a whole lot, but okay. Uh, you, you gave okay, me ask something. me something specific something. then. Um, oh, oh, I went to the gym this morning. That kind of like working out in the morning is kind of like one of the best feelings, I think. It, it, it starts your day and then you be hungry for that meal and you get your protein in and all that stuff. But like working out in the morning, I think just sets, uh, uh, I don't know. I felt like I felt like being in the gym on a Sunday morning kind of made me feel like because uh, I had watched I was in the massage chair at Planet Fitness before my workout because I sometimes wake up like sore and got to stretch and stuff. So when I was sitting there, I kind of looked at a few churches and this is no diss, but you know me, I keep it all the way real. And I was thinking, you know, the sermons I scrolled through because I follow all these churches and all these pastors and stuff. And I'm just like scrolling through the different yeah. sermons. And you know what I realized? Like most of the sermons that they were talking or giving were about yourself. And I was like, that's the problem. And I was feeling like it's better that I'm in here taking care of my temple than being in a church that's telling me just to do for myself, which is the opposite of what people are going to get when they watch this, when we're talking about empathy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like empathy. That's what I'm looking. That's why I'm looking forward to okay, talking about I'm it. Ready so. to we can just move on. So are you all ready for me to discuss the power yeah. of empathy um, and what I have done my research on in reference to mm -hmm. empathy? And before I even begin, I want to let you all know that I am an empath. Mm -hmm. um, I, I am, and this, this topic was very easy for me to dig mm -hmm. into because it's, uh, I am an empath. For those of you that yeah. are watching that know me personally, yeah. I think that you all can agree that I'm an mm -hmm. empath, um, and uh, Brandon is mm -hmm. one too. Um, Justin, hey, hey Justin, Justin. He's saying hey to you, yeah. I think, or he, he said, said hey, hey y'all, so he yeah, said hey to too. me too. <laughs> okay, hey Justin, it's all right, it's all right. Um, so with um, with empathy, I have um, I have really this this topic was really fun to discuss. So um, I just wanted to mm -hmm. put that out there that I I'm an empath. So. I'll go ahead and get oh, started. Oh, so, are you going? Are you going to say what like, an empath is? Oh, Can you tell the imp? Yes, I'm going to go. I'm going to get okay, into all that. Cool. Yep, I am. So, because um, I have a couple of definitions, and there's verge, there's different versions of empathy. So I'm going to mm. go through all that. I got, okay, I got y'all. Okay. I got you yes. all. Okay, I got y'all. Okay, so Jamil Zaki, he is a psychologist at Stanford University, and um, he and he's an author of a book called The War for Kindness building empathy mm. in a fractured mm. world so i want you all to look up that book um it's by J jamil zaki um and it's the the title is called i'll give it again the war for kindness building empathy in a fractured world mm. okay I'm, i want to say that one more time mm. i just want to say that one i more like time. it the book the title of the book was mm -hmm. powerful um hey everett how you doing everett's in the room so um, the title of this book, I'm going to say it one more time, and I'm going to okay. move on. The War for Kindness, mm -hmm. Building Empathy in a Fractured World. Powerful. Just the title alone just mm -hmm. sent me, okay? Um, but he stated that putting ourselves into a story of people who are on the surface that appear different from us, we can recognize our common humanity with mm -hmm. them. Just, just powerful mm -hmm. stuff when it comes okay. to empathy. And that can trigger empathy in a really natural way. So when we take the time to um, look at people on the surface, I see Jim <laughs> says, hey, all just waiting to find the proper place to drop a boot. You know what, Jim? Thank you for being here. It's going to yes. come. It's going to come. Thank you for coming, Jim. Um, it, there will be some boops. I think more when Brandon talks, though, not <laughs> necessarily with me. So... Uh, <laughs> So yeah, so um, he, he stated that, um, I'll repeat that again. So he stated that putting ourselves into a story of people who are on the surface um, appear different from us, we can recognize our common humanity with them. Um, that's, and that can trigger empathy mm. in a really natural way. This was his mm. statement. Um, so I'm gonna give you all the definition of empathy. So empathy is feeling with, with someone or being able to put yourself in their place as if you were them and feeling those feelings. That is the definition of empathy. Okay. So it's feeling with someone and being able to put yourself in their place as if you were with them or as you were them and feeling those mm -hmm. feelings. 
So there are three types of mm -hmm. empathy. So I'm going to talk about these three. Mm -hmm. um, and some of you all may know what they are, but if you mm -hmm. don't, here's, here's, the, here's the three types. Mm -hmm. You have cognitive yep. empathy. You have emotional empathy. Mm -hmm. Compassionate and you have compassionate empathy. I did empathy. my research too. <laughs> Come on, Reese! <laughs> Uh -huh. Okay, so cognitive empathy is being able to put yourself in someone else's place and see their perspective and is used in only thought rather than mm -hmm. feeling. So a way to view this empathy is perspective taking. So you're only, look, you're only seeing it from the lens of them, but you're not putting any emotion mm -hmm. into it. That is cognitive empathy, mm -hmm. right? Then you have emotional empathy. That is when you could quite literally feel the other person's emotions alongside them. It can be positive and negative in some aspects, mm -hmm. though, because it can make individuals fully understand and feel other people's emotions, but it can also be a way to have empathy overload, mm -hmm. right? Where the individual may not be able to respond effectively to that other person at all due to being overwhelmed with their own emotions. Yeah. So empathy mm -hmm. can kind of go overboard, too, um, so emotional empathy is actually really good, but it can be overused. Mm -hmm. And then you have compassionate empathy. Compassionate empathy is when you feel someone's pain, but it's taking action to help fix and mitigate the pain that was caused. So this style of empathy is the most appropriate and effective. So I'll say this, when it comes to compassionate empathy, I feel like I have that. Yeah. I feel that when I, um, when someone is giving me their, their, their problem or whatever they're going through or whatever, um, I'm able to have that empathy with, for them. And then let's say, hey, what, so here's some solutions or here's what I think should happen. That's compassion. Mm -hmm. Because if you're too invested into it, it can become the overload of emotional mm -hmm. empathy. So finding the balance, you all, is very important for people to understand because cognitive empathy is under emotional. Mm -hmm. Emotional empathy is over emotional, mm -hmm. but compassionate empathy, you all, is the right balance between logic and emotion. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to dig deeper into, into that. So one of the things that Jamil mentions, the, uh, the professor, is that empathy benefits all parties involved. He gave an example of how patients of empathic doctors are more satisfied with their care but are also more likely to follow the doctor's recommendations mm -hmm. as well. So think about when you go to a doctor to see them and you can tell that they are really vested into your, how you feel about yep. the, the out, the, what, what the results are, the outcome of what your diagnosis may be or your illness or anything going, or your injury, mm -hmm. anything. But when a person sees that they're, that doctor is in, in, uh, has an empathic mm -hmm. uh, display, when they see that, more than likely, and I'm and I'm speaking for myself, but if you, I mean, like, let me know how you all feel. Mm -hmm. I'm more likely to follow, follow the doctor's recommendation because I feel that they are really caring about, like, where my mind is mm -hmm. at with it, right? So, um, and it's also important for preventative care. So spouses of empathic partners ha are happier in their marriages, too. So if you think about empathic uh, partners, mm -hmm. so, I mean, it's ideal for both both uh, parties to be empathic, but if you have one, then that that works mm -hmm. as well. Um, but one of the things that a lot of people fail to realize, though, um, is that people who experience empathy for others also benefit too. Mm -hmm. Though um, it is not all about receiving the empathy, but it's about but giving it helps us too. So a lot of people feel that like, oh well, I don't. Um, I, I don't gain anything from my empathy. No, you do. You gain something because you're able to mm -hmm. show an, the, the side of, of really knowing how that person feels. But it goes back to that compassionate empathy mm -hmm. where you're actually giving them things to fix. Right. right? So um, Jamil stated that empathy for others are less likely to become become uh, empathy for others are less likely to become depressed. Mm -hmm. And feeling empathy for others reduces our stress. So, like, I mean, I, I'm only speaking for self. I, for me, when it comes to depression, I don't think that I've experienced depression. And I'm, and I'm, and the thing is, mm -hmm. is, 
there's a lot of people that have, but for me, I feel that with my way of being in, uh, an, an empath has allowed me to be able, the compassion and empathy by yeah. you all. I've been <laughs> able to not go into a depression. I've been, I've been in low states before, I've been mm -hmm. down, just due to circumstances that have happened in mm -hmm. my life. Um, and I've had a pretty tragic childhood, but I think when it comes to depression, um, I don't think that I've went down that, that okay. lane, um, which is, I'm thankful mm -hmm. for. So a question was asked of Jamil, for Jamil to, um, uh, on if social media plays a factor on if people even know who, are the, who they are communicating with and who is listening and not listening on social media, mm. mind you. Um, and does that cause a decline in empathy? Mm. Brandon, do you think that causes a decline in empathy based on social media? So, like, how does social media in your mind, and all the viewers, please mm -hmm. come in, uh, how does social media play a factor if people, uh, if people are not aware of who they're communicating with and who's listening and not listening? Do you think that declines the empathy because it's a social media post versus me and you face-to-face -face with one another? Yes, but I think it's it might be just a a showing of who that person really is and also the fact that they have limited information of maybe what that person is saying. So like the online, um, I think uh, information. Jim says yes. Yep. I think he's, he said yes. So I, I think <laughs> information and the way that information is presented. For example, I don't, I pay attention to headlines, but as they say, take it with a grain of salt. Like the headline is, is for clickbait. And we talked about that, I think, on the last show when I talked about digesting media with truth. I'm speaking, I'm speaking more of social media. You're talking about news well, media, though. I'm talking about individuals that are well, posting. Because I want to go to the social mm -hmm. media, not news well, media. Because news media is... I'm talking about... That's a whole well, other... <laughs> well, I'm, I'm saying something. I'm kind of talking about how information is exchanged. And like I, maybe I'm talking about my social media as far as people's response based on what they think I'm saying or what mm -hmm. um, they... Like if they don't know me as well, then they might think I'm saying something that I'm not or associate me based on how I look with a particular um, subject or thinking that I'm saying something that I'm not. So I think, I think people feel more emboldened to say whatever they're going to say online behind a keyboard than, than what they would uh, and say. I'm gonna go, and I'm going to go into, and I'm glad you said that. So I'm going to go a little bit deeper, so I'm gonna, but I'm going to read Everett's mm -hmm. comment. So Everett said, quick question, just as a different avenue to look at, when does empathy bleed into sympathy? Most do not want sympathy. Some don't even realize that um, they are being sympathetic, but believe they are being empathetic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because there's a difference between mm -hmm. empathetic and um, sympathetic. Mm -hmm. And then Jim says, just like in a text, you can't hear the person's voice. You can hear pain in a voice, not in a text yep. or a post. So um, I'm going to answer Everett's question. Um, just, so you're saying, he asked, just as a different avenue to look at, when does empathy bleed into sympathy? Mm -hmm. So what I'll say to that is I, this is how I feel. So I feel that in order to even have any kind of sympathy, you need to have empathy because how can I have like if having sympathy for someone, I feel that in that umbrella of sympathy, there's empathy there. Mm -hmm. Cause how can I have sympathy for someone? If I don't, if it, and I'm only speaking for myself, if I don't even, mm -hmm acknowledge how they possibly feel because mm. being sympathetic is just been saying oh i feel bad for you but you're not even taking nothing with it you're just like oh i'm so sorry mm -hmm. to hear that like i feel like sympathy is more i'm so sorry to hear that but empathy is more saying oh my god i can feel your mm -hmm. pain i am so sorry there's th so i think in order to even have sympathy i feel that there should be a form of empathy in that if that mm -hmm. makes sense does that make sense mm -hmm. to you all? i don't know if that makes sense um uh, yeah, ever says, but some see sympathy as pitying. Yes. Yeah. So like, so with sympathy, that's what I'm saying. On the surface of sympathy, me having sympathy for you, there is no emotion I feel tied to sympathy. Because mm -hmm. if I can have sympathy for you, then that's just I'm I'm sympathizing with your situation, but I'm not feeling how I'm not even trying to take the time to even feel what you're feeling, which is what empathy mm -hmm. is. 
that's that's my answer. I, I got something. Um, let me ever, let me add that, that let me add sense. on to that because so when I and and this might mm-hmm. be something you're going to get to, but we're just going to get there early, I guess. But like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm no, I'm yeah. not there yet. So I was thinking that um, as you were reading the different types of empathy, one of the best ways to see which one you have, because I was thinking like, okay, we're giving you this information. The best way to see where you fall on that is to ask the people around you, because when you were talking and you were like. When Andre, when you said I have compassionate empathy, it made me no. You're good, Everett. Thanks. Thank you for providing the. Yeah, questions. you're good. So no, <laughs> no sympathy is good to talk about with yeah. empathy. Absolutely. So Andre, when you were saying I have compassionate empathy, I was thinking that I was thinking about the fact that I know that you have that, and one of the ways I know that you have that is because you'll get on the phone and call people, and and in COVID nineteen, you told me about like how you how you have this peace. And that you're spreading this peace around to everyone else and how you've had conversations to help people access that same peace that you have. So to me, in order to do that, you would have to have compassionate empathy. So that's one of the ways. Um, and so to, to, to segue into whatever it was asking, I think it's the, depends on the person. How are they receiving what you're saying? Because, because, <laughs> I would say I was saying because I was speaking for myself. Yeah. I was speaking for myself and answering. I couldn't speak for the yeah. population. No, no, I'm saying, speak for I'm saying yeah. Well, I'm saying like one of the ways sympathy bleeds into empathy is about your audience. Like, is your audience telling you like, Mm-mm, that's I don't want your pity. Save that. Is your audience, you know, like vibing yeah. with you? Like, are you somebody that people come to with their problems? And like, you know, are you emotional about them? Are you compassionate about them? You know, are you able to see things from their perspective? Or are you just like, hey, you, you need to get it together. Like, I think all of these fit, but, but your yeah. audience, your yeah. audience, because if we're practicing empathy, right? Like the way that I practice it towards you, it's less about that. And it's more about the manner in which you receive it. Because you could be receiving, Ooh, I right? love like, that. You yes. could be receiving mm-hmm. it as sympathy and pity, but I mean to send it as empathy. Um, so how can you do? How can you change what how they perceive it then? Because for mm-hmm. me, I feel like I go the extra mile. So like, if someone tells me their mother passed away, I'm not saying, "Oh, I'm so sorry to hear mm-hmm. that." No, I'm saying, oh my gosh, I can feel yeah. your pain. I, I, I'm just like so torn mm-hmm. with you. Well, shoot, did you see how the difference mm-hmm. of that was? Now I'm just so I'm sorry for mm-hmm. your loss. That's sympathy. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but if I'm saying, oh my gosh, like oh my god, I can feel your pain and I can relate because da 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 da, da. like I, that's what that's what I mean. Uh, and Everett says three thousand to know you and be around you. Your spirit says empathy. Thank you, Everett. Everett Thanks, knows yeah. me. Um, ever says, thank you for that narrative, Brandon. Makes all the sense in the world. All communication is dictated by the reception yes. of the message. Uh, reception of the message. Yes. Um, and, and I guess I answered it, but didn't say those words. So you actually made it more, you had more clarity to what I was saying, because I was only speaking mm-hmm. for myself in reference to that. So, I mean, Brandon, you, you squared it away. Mm-hmm. So, so I'll That's move on. Here. So the question was... <laughs> So being so social media playing a factor, uh, if people know even know who they are uh, communicating with and who is listening or not listening, which causes a decline in empathy? That was the what, what does it cause a decline in empathy? Um, and and I have in parentheses in my notes the sensitivity of a social media post versus saying or expressing that same thing to a person face to face, right? So if I'm face to face with someone, I feel personally, I feel like the message can be received a whole lot differently, but a lot of people are not very careful on what they post on social Mm. media because social media, black and white can be misconstrued. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think Jim, I think Jim can agree with that. Um, So, and I'm really speaking more on a person that's different from you. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, not the person that has the same views. If you have the same viewpoint and the same opinion, the same, the, then there's no way, there's no need for any of the uh, back and forth. But someone that's different from you, are you careful on what you say based on someone that's different from you? Are you careful about how you are controlling your narrative on social media Mm -hmm. with the black and white? Because in person, uh, uh, everything's going to be like directly in Mm -hmm. your face. But social media is black and white. 
So I'm going to give you Jamil's answer. J Jamil answered and stated that some of the ways that we tend to use the internet might not be empathy positive, mm. which kind of goes back to what I said. It may not be empathy mm. positive. He stated that we do not have the chance to see each other's faces and voices, kind of like what Jim said. Um, so Jim is on it. Um, in real time interactions, because we can only see things from black and white viewpoints, mm -hmm. right? Which are not great triggers of empathy being utilized. Mm -hmm. So, but, now this is me talking, but there is a way to control a narrative on social media to where empathy can shine through what is said and what is displayed to everyone who sees what is posted. I'm going to say that again, because I thought it just was, but there is a way to control the okay. narrative on social media <laughs> to where empathy can shine through what is said and what is displayed to everyone who sees what is posted. So I'm going to read Everett's comment. As a person reading a post, my emotion is that moment will dictate to me as to what I feel you meant, not what you actually meant by the words. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, and I like that. But I'm saying to that, Everett, that there is a way that you can control that narrative to where what you're meaning to say is how you receive it. So, but before I get into that, what is social media? What is social media, Brandon? Do you have, I have, I have a definition mm -hmm. um, and it's a computer-based technology that facilitates the sharing of ideas, mm -hmm. thoughts, and information through the building of virtual networks mm -hmm. and communities. That is what social mm -hmm. media is. Mm -hmm. Right. So but with that, let's define social awareness. Mm. Social awareness. Um, and if anybody wants to provide a, their definition of social awareness, please do, because I'm getting ready to provide you okay. with one. Social awareness. Now, that is the ability to take the perspective of and empathize with others, mm -hmm. including those from diverse backgrounds and mm. cultures. That's what social awareness yeah. is. So what? So I'm going to discuss my social media real quick. So now I'm going to talk about my social mm -hmm. media. On my social media, for those of you that are my friends on Facebook that are watching, and come in and say however you feel my social media is, I know that I'm a person that I'm very careful on what I post on social mm -hmm. media. Um, and the reason why I say that is because I know that well, what I will say to you all is a lot of people don't realize that social media is not for you. Social media is for the person looking at your social media mm -hmm. post and what Agreed. you're saying. Mm -hmm. It is because a lot of people don't realize mm -hmm. that, though. There's a lot of folks that, do, that only see social media. That's my page, my post. I'm going to say what I mm -hmm. want to say. Not really paying attention. I'm going to post what I want to post because it's mm -hmm. my page. Well, yes, it's your face book but your face is being displayed and what you say is being displayed your pictures are being displayed for the other person to receive them mm -hmm. that is what social media that that is what social media is supposed to be when you incorporate social awareness i know that i i feel and know hey chris hey chris joined. um i know that for me um, and y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, I'm very careful on what I say, how I mm -hmm. say it, and to make sure that I'm impacting you all in a way that is uplifting. In mm -hmm. um, because I am controlling the narrative of how you view mm -hmm. me, but a lot of people don't care about that. They don't have that social awareness piece where they're like, you know what? There's people from diverse cultures and backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So I am being very sensitive to how I articulate what I'm trying yeah. to say. So my post will be uh, me taking pictures with friends. It'll be posting my successes in my military career. If I decide to post like me getting promoted in the military, um, like my posts are to put a smile on your face. It's not a p to put a smile on mine. I'm already smiling over here. Cheese. That I'm smiling, right? But my post is supposed to be my social awareness on my social media is what I'm trying to let you know of. I'm trying to tell mm -hmm. you what's going on mm -hmm. with me. So my social media is not about me because I already know what's going on with me. I'm sharing what's going on so you can see what's going on mm -hmm. with me and for you to benefit from my post. 
But mm -hmm. a lot of folks don't know how to post something to know, okay, this post is, 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 is not supposed to really be benefiting mm -hmm. me because they internalize what social media is to them and say, well, my social media is my social media, so I'm going to post what I feel is best for mm -hmm. me. If you see and you don't like it, get up. There's a because I I don't like that stuff like that because there's a lot of folks that say if you don't like what I gotta say, unfriend me. If you don't like what I gotta say, unfollow. I when I said when I see stuff yeah. like that, you all and y'all <clears> let me know <throat> how you feel about that. It, I despise it. I despise when a person posts something that may be derogatory in language, derogatory in how you're expressing mm -hmm. yourself, derogatory, just something very nasty, mm -hmm. right? But then after you post your nasty comment, you say, well, if you if you don't like what I got, I despise mm -hmm. it. Now, that's your page and mm -hmm. your business. But what's ha what you're not noticing is that could be affecting me. So you don't care, but you're not having the empathy to think about maybe how I may mm -hmm. feel about what you just said. Because at the end of the day, you're not caring. You're only caring about what you post and what mm -hmm. you say. So you're not having the empathy to think of others, which is why my social media is tailored to ensuring that what I'm saying to you or what I'm posting to you is going to put a smile on your face or it's going to be educational mm -hmm. too, because educational is good. I don't really post educational mm -hmm. things. I post more, hey, y'all, I got my degree, y'all. I, 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 I think my last post was me posting my master's degree way in September mm -hmm. 1st. I posted my degree. That's me sharing with you. I want to put a smile on mm -hmm. your face. And say, hey, I got my masters, y'all. I want you to celebrate with me my yeah. success. But I'm not posting things to make people feel a certain kind mm -hmm. of way. I'm posting because I want to make my empathy towards how you feel about what I'm posting is what I care mm -hmm. about. So that's what my social media mm -hmm. is. That's what mine is. Um, but this is this is going to be me asking you, mm -hmm. Brandon. What is your social media? Or do you want to answer that? Or do you want to? Sure. Just... Yeah, I, I uh, definitely thought about that. Um, through the years, I think um, my social media was seen inflammatory by some people. I think, I think uh, around 2014, 2015, like I've always uh, been interested in politics, which uh, I first started um, studying like health and wellness at Arizona State University. Then I switched over to, hey, what's up, Taylor? Taylor just joined, uh, Vibolitical, welcome. Please join the chat, uh, like, share, comment. Um, so talking about- Come on, promote. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> good to see you too, Taylor. Uh, so in talking about my social media, there's been times where it has been inflammatory, but at the same time, what, what didn't shake me and the reason why I didn't change um, my social media mm -hmm. is because these people knew me personally. They happen to be, they mm -hmm. happen to be of different races, but, but they knew me personally and they would turn my post into something that I wasn't saying. And it's like, you know, me personally outside of this social media, if this was somebody else and somebody else was, because guess what? People from the UK, I got friends on my, I got pen pals from Africa, Pakistan, China, like people from all around the world, like a couple weeks ago, or maybe a week ago, a guy from Nigeria was like, man, I've been following your social media for three years. And I went and checked. He'd been following my social media for three years. And he was like, I have found you to be a man of God and an honorable person. There was mm -hmm. other times where I felt like, okay, I'm posting negative stuff. Cause if anybody friends on my politics, friends on my politics, friends on my page, you know what I post. It's things that could seemingly be inflammatory, but, um, and even my, me and my spouse talked about this. What's up, Shay? Shay's in the chat. That's my husband. Um, so hey, uh, even with that, like we've had discussions about the things that I post, but I'm that person though, who says this is my social media. However, I am, I do appreciate people who's, who post, like people comment and I don't have to comment back or I don't get angry about it. Now, if you're trolling me, that's something else. Like if you're trolling because you know me in person, but then you're trying to twist what I'm saying to fit some type of narrative, that's when I have an issue or a problem. But I use my social media for political, spiritual, um, and uplifting and, and uh, edifying. And there's been times where I felt like my social media was negative, but that's when I got this message from somebody in the UK who was like, I really appreciate you highlighting these things on your Facebook because I have a daughter and I'm, you know, worried about the world and I'm praying about the world that she's growing up in. 
So whenever I, whenever I was feeling negative about the stuff I was posting, somebody else was receiving positivity from it. And I felt like that was so amazing to me because I'm like, should I post this stuff? I do think about things before I post it. And uh, I know that some, sometimes, yeah, and I'm not saying, sometimes yeah. the, the, the title or the article is could be inflammatory or the headline. I mean, because that's the news sources that come out. However, you know, I think I want people to dive in a little bit deeper and actually digest the information because I think it's it's something interesting when I share ideas and information on Facebook. I want to read um, what Everett said because I'm um, uh, Cl Clarice said. So I hope I said her yeah, name right. Clarice, Clarice, that's my cousin. She made a uh -huh, comment. That's my cousin. Oh, okay. So Everett says, remember, no matter what your intentions, there will always be people, haters, if you will, that will see your uplifting comments and spin it to a negative, which I totally um, agree mm -hmm. with. You posting your masters, which is a great achievement, being spun to say he is just trying to boast and make himself mm -hmm. look good. Um, Clarice says, indeed, got to always stay true to you because um, cause in your purpose, love you lots yes. and lots. So she was mm -hmm. talking to you. So, um, so thank I want to um, respond to um, Everett. Thank you, thank you, Everett, for that. So, yeah. So the intent. So the it, my intent, yes, absolutely, is to to uh, to uplift and, and edify, as I said earlier. Um, and at the end of the day, I if if I can go to sleep knowing that what I posted was a way to uplift you if, if if there's any hate in your heart about something as simple as a degree then i have to question our friendship at mm -hmm. that point so then it takes so it takes ownership off of me because i know what mm -hmm. i'm doing i'm more speaking about the folks that are speaking derogatory in language being very uh trying to uh or unintentionally too in some ways uh, racially dividing the country like there's because there's certain posts and certain things that people say where I, a lot of times I feel like they know what mm -hmm. they're doing but they don't care mm -hmm. I'm, I'm speaking about those and so I'm not really speaking about my post because my post I know what my intent is mm -hmm. with my post I'm speaking more of the folks that lack the empathy on if they're trying to be combative mm -hmm. in a post and I said what I said <laughs> like mini leaks like I said what uh -huh. I said and they don't care they don't care so I'm speaking more in terms of those individuals that may lack the 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 uh, reasoning behind their negativity in their posts. Not where it's informational like Brandon. Brand is, is providing information, facts, mm -hmm. stuff that's like credible. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And I am providing a very safe, happiness, peace kind of thing. So if you're still if you're gonna flip what my intention is, then that's not on me. I'm more speaking about the folks that don't have any care at all about what mm. their intentions are. Like, they don't care what intent they're trying mm -hmm. to provide. They just post it because I said what I mm. said. And then that's the part that is, that's the part I'm really more speaking of, Everett, if that yeah, makes it does. sense yeah. to you. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to move on because I'm almost mm -hmm. done. So there was an argument um, and some criticism that Jamil received. Um, and he received it from an author and another psychologist by the name of Paul Bloom. Um, and he wrote a book um, that was called Against Empathy, The Case for Rational Compassion. Mm. Think about that title. Mm. So he had a, a person that opposed everything Jamil said, mm -hmm. right? And was like, he wrote a book called Against Empathy, The Case for Rational Compassion. Mm. And um, he stated that expressing empathy can tend to be biased. And when we ask people to be em empathic, we're really inviting them to be prejudiced. Is that true? Is that true nah. to y'all? No. No! Nah. Nah. <laughs> so it's not! Yeah. I don't understand where he was going with that. Because I was like, I mean, I understood what he was trying mm -hmm. to do. But I'm thinking like, Paul... Oh, you, you know what that is? You know oh. what that is? That's that's a... Uh, um, it's the... The whole idea of politi remember political co being politically correct kept coming up over and over and over. It's basically just revising that in a sentence to make it sound a little smarter. But but the idea of being politically correct when people the people who brought up political correctness brought it up to not be empathetic to the message which they were sending. That's a boop. Come on, Jim. Where's the boop? I need the boop. That was a boop. I told you Brandon was 
so yeah, so um, and, um uh, Clarice said negative, <laughs> so she responded yeah, to it and you. said negative. So Jamil, Jamil, thank you, Clarice. So Jamil responded to the criticism. I said, come on, you better respond to the criticism. Mm -hmm. So Jamil responded to the criticism from Paul Bloom and said, it is important to focus on the fact that we control how we empathize and make choices. Thank you, Jim, for the boot. And um, it is important to focus on the fact that we control how we empathize and make choices about the way we deploy our mm. caring. When I tell you I passed out, mm. I, I, I was like, mm -hmm. wow. Um, if that is recognized, we can try to make a different choice and broaden our empathy towards people who are different from mm. ourselves. Isn't that Very. powerful? Powerful. I mean, I mean, I don't even, I don't even have nothing to <laughs> say. I, I don't even have a response to that because that was so powerful from mm -hmm. Jamil. Um, so Jamil also stated that if we open ourselves to other cultures, diverse backgrounds, all that good mm -hmm. stuff, right? To people on the other side of a political or racial divide, maybe what we should start out doing is not, is not just trying to get to know them and empathize more with them, but to recognize if we're empathizing so much with our group, which is the group you mm -hmm. agree with, that we'll be unable to uh, be flexible emotionally. Because if we're only talking to the people that agree yes. with us, we're not able to be flexible emotionally. Yes. Uh, Maria said, I was going to say that sometimes people are married to labels like I'm, like I'm an empath. Mm. Mm. Can you elaborate a little bit mm. more? Yeah, elaborate that on that, Maria, um, twin. Elaborate on that. Yeah, that, that, that's a, a powerful well, cause, statement. Because, cause, okay, hold up. Like, because what, what it made me think of is that people might think they're an empath and that they're good at being empathetic. Mm. However, all of their friends or their close friends be like, uh, you're not a good listener. You're not somebody I, I would come to about. So they might feel like them, they themselves, like I'm an empath, you know, like, like it's a badge of honor because being an empath, shoot, I mean, it's some work you got to do. You know, you, you have to pray and meditate. And Yeah, oh. he, she said, so they feel they have to be uh, in, empathetic in every I like situation. It. Yeah, because sometimes you don't, uh, uh, one of the other negative things to being an empath all the time is sometimes you become an enabler or you become somebody's God, you know, like being an, being an enabler, like they always come to you for a pity party when it was like, no, boo-boo, like you need to get yourself together. <laughs> No, no boo boo, boo. <laughs> no boo boo. Like 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 you need it. And Maria just from she said just an I example. Like mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a good example, Maria. Thank you. So all in all, I'm, I'm wrapping up, um, and then um, I'm gonna give Brandon the floor. Um, all in all, it is way easier for a lot of people to empathize with people who are like us than unlike mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. right? But all of us have different selves, right? inside us at any given moment kind of kind of kind of to what maria was saying like you know like every situation yeah. or in every situation being empathetic yeah. um and each self carries with it a different group so maybe to maybe of a different size yeah. there are going to be encounters where there is someone who's different from ourselves but it is important 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 to remember that empathy at a deep level is the understanding of someone else's world and knowing that it's just as real as yours. Mm -hmm. That's that that's what so you you can't there there's there's no way someone can say, oh well my my world is real but yours is like I'm not understanding mm -hmm. it. That's not showing empathy because my world is just as real as your world. That's where empathy comes in because I, yes, although I know what my world is like and what I'm experiencing mm -hmm. in my life, I have to be able to be an empath. I, in order to be effective in the uh, recognizing someone else's pain or someone else's struggle or someone else's life or someone else's yeah. uh, racism and all that, I have to be able to be that compassionate mm -hmm. empathy, that compassionate death spoke of, and, and have that. So with that, there must be dignity and respect that goes hand in mm -hmm. hand for individuals to expand on their mm -hmm. empathy, which in turn means compassionate mm -hmm. empathy. That's where the compassionate empathy comes in. Dignity and respect. Because it, so to kind of go a little bit back to the social media post and social media, because 
Jim, I think Jim answered the question where he was like, no, it, or well, I think a couple of y'all were like, oh, no, it's, it's, there is no, there is a, a decline in empathy based on social media posts. It is a decline mm -hmm. in empathy or a decline in, 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 in being able to show empathy in a post because a post can be kind of like whatever it said, there could be haters that can turn around completely what I was trying to do instead of, mm -hmm. um, instead of seeing it for what it was. So that's to Everett's point. But what I'm trying to say is, is that I'm more speaking about the individuals, as I said before, that are intentionally trying to say what they say, not caring about how the other person is going to mm -hmm. feel. Not me where my intentions are mm -hmm. good. My intentions are good when I post on social mm -hmm. media, right? Like I know my intent is to be positive, uplifting yeah. and all that. If you don't know me well enough to know that that's what that is when I post on social media, or if you don't know that with Brandon's way where he's giving you facts, he's giving you sources, he's giving you information to help you grow. If you're not, if you're not recognizing that boo boo, if you're not <laughs> recognizing that, then that is on yeah. you, right? That is on the other person receiving the information. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm very passionate about empathy because I know what narrative I'm trying to push out and I know what narrative Brandon is trying to mm -hmm. push out and so that is what compassion and empathy is for Brandon's compassionate about providing that information going in giving it up because information that kind of information is important I'm I'm the opposite mm -hmm. of that um where I'm like no I'm just going to shower you with love shower you with positive uplifting and edifying those are what I'm that's what mm -hmm. I'm doing so don't don't misconstrue or don't twist what we're trying to do as if and try to flip what our mm -hmm. intent is and um, ever said intent versus yep. impact um, or impact versus mm -hmm. intent. Absolutely. And that's what I'm going to be training on tomorrow for EOLC impact versus mm -hmm. intent. Um, because it's important. It's important to uh, recognize Agreed. those things. So in closing, I'll say this for me, it is vital that if we all as Americans in, in this country, if we all exercise compassionate empathy, you all, we can be the driving force to be united as a whole mm. and have more control as to how we display love towards one mm. another. And I'm done. I love it. Thank you, Andre. You did a great job. Good research. Thank you. Good nuggets. Oof. And, uh, and, you know, so like starting, like how did we get here? I think, you know, how are we talking about mm. empathy right now? And um, author Simon Sinek says that empathy requires curiosity. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, just just to give an example, like on your job, I like right? that. I like, like on that. A, on your job. Mm -hmm. You know, let's say you have a a low performer, and you you talk to them one time about it, and you let's say you counsel them, and um, but then they they're still having the issue. Oh, hey, Rodrigo, my boo Valdivia hey. is on. I call him my boo, Rod Valdivia is on. I'm with the SLC with him. Um, and then Maria said, empathy needs to be viewed as a strength. Absolutely. So with the example of somebody, a low performer on the job, you counsel them one time um, because they know what the expectations are. But let's say that second time, I mean, somebody like a compassionate uh, person who's uh, a compassionate, empathetic person might ask the first time, like, hey, this is not like you, what's going on? But somebody another way to display it would be like, yes, you did counsel them the first time because they know, you know, the rules. But the second time it's like, hey, I talked to you about this before. Like, what's going on? How are you doing? Not looking at the person and their low performance as a problem, but what's a problem that I can help you fix? Or um, what is what is the obstacle that's stopping you from reaching the goal? You know what I'm saying? That's one way that I think, you know, empathy can be displayed like in the workplace. Another way I think we got here, I sort of hit this on the um, the pop up, but I wish and I'm praying for an America that would mourn over the 190,000 the way we mourn over 3000. So, you know, it was just 9-11 and September 11th. And we all know what happened on September 11th. And they say never forget. Right. So but at the same time, there are 190,000 people have died and the news is telling you, oh, only six percent of people died from COVID-19. The rest had underlying conditions. So there's this, um, so in the world that we're living in, th there's this uh, desire to fragment your empathy. I feel that we're all born empathetic creatures. 
uh, there was, I was looking for it and I couldn't find it, but there was a documentary that Jim Carrey kind of was in and, and helped. Hey, Brandon, another Brandon is on. Um, okay, right? Brandon and Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, like there was a documentary in which Jim Carrey was in and in this documentary, they, they found all these people and showed them different images. And they saw like that there's a, there's a reaction in the body when, um, when someone's being harmed. Like there's a connection to you viewing somebody being harmed. And what I, what I think it was doing is showing that humans, like we're all connected. We all do have social empathy. We all have it. But there's, there's, there's these fragmentations that happen within our society to make certain behaviors acceptable to a certain type of people. Like, that's why we hear, A, you know, that's why we hear sympathy for Kyle Rittenhouse. Oh, he was just defending himself. But then George Floyd, there's, a, there's all these people who are like, why would you defend this guy who killed, you know, just murdered two people? And he walks up to the police with his hands up. But yet, you know, a, like... Okay, sorry, I just had to say it. But the president responded by saying, like, he on like law and order. But the same people, this is this is what empathy will do. Empathy will have you screaming law and order, but not law and order for everybody. But not law and order for the people who break the laws and disrupt the order. So you a lack of empathy will have you, you know, back in the blue, the thin blue line, and like on this side staunchly and never see a situation in which a police officer becomes a murderer or uh, an assaulter, a, you know, like somebody assaulting somebody or like, you know what I'm saying? And that's the fragmentation mm -hmm. of, you know, empathy that I see happening, which is probably why we're talking about it here. Um, mm -hmm. and, and Shane, yo, um, hubby said, we learned to use the leap method at work with customers. Listen, empathize, agree, partner. I love it. See? And look at the first thing with that, within that is yeah. to listen. So how could you even hear or how could you even see from somebody else's perspective if you don't listen and you're closed off to that? And that's why I said, you know, that, that lines up with the example I just gave. Is there ever a situation in which a police officer, for those who are not displaying empathy for the actions of police officers and are saying law and order, is there ever a situation in which they would say a police officer murdered somebody? I want to go back to what you first said about empathy when I was done with my talking okay. points. And you said to have some kind of, to have any kind of empathy has to be some form of curiosity. Yeah. That stuck with me. Yeah. I mean, not that I wasn't paying mm -hmm. attention to what you mm -hmm. were saying after that, but that part stuck with me because I, I feel that kind of going back to what I said about social media mm -hmm. posts is that there has to be some kind of E uh, eagerness and 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 desire to want to know how someone else is going to perceive or take in what you're posting. Mm -hmm. So if you have a lack of of that on social media, then that tells me that you're not an empath. So if they say that they're an empath, then no. And you said fragmented empathy, which was amazing because I didn't even think about mm -hmm. that that being connected mm -hmm. with one another. But um, I just think that it's very important for individuals on social media to work on what their, what their intent yeah, is. I agree. Because intent versus impact, as, as Everett said, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the intent that I have can have a total opposite mm -hmm. impact. That's not mm -hmm. on me. But if my intentions are bad, if my intentions are selfish, mm -hmm. and they're only looking at my point of view and not the other person that's looking mm -hmm. at it, from a diverse background than me, mm -hmm. a different background, a different upbringing, a different everything than me, then no, I'm not an yeah. empath. And that I think that is just so important to recognize is there has to be, like you said, a curiosity there yep. of like, okay, what I'm getting ready to post or what I'm getting ready to mm -hmm. say, is it going to benefit folks? Because I want it to benefit mm -hmm. people. Now, if you misunderstand or you um, purposely just don't see, try to look at the negative, of what I'm intentionally trying mm -hmm. to do, then I can't control that. That's not my intent. Yeah. But I want folks to look at the intent of what they're getting ready to do, which drives mm -hmm. the right kind of impact. Because because impact, yes, how I perceive what you're saying, yes, that does matter. I'm not saying that the impact doesn't mm -hmm. matter. But I want folks that to be a lot more cognizant 
of what they're saying on social mm -hmm. media and look and not only look at it from I'm just saying it because I said what mm -hmm. I said and I don't really care what you're thinking. I said it. That's what we have to avoid mm -hmm. doing is that when we're giving, putting out information, we're saying how we feel or we're post, think about how that's going to impact someone mm -hmm. else. So looking at your intent back there, the intent is like, mm, my intent is, if your intent is like, shoot, I said what I said, I don't care what mm -hmm. nobody thinks. Well, shoot, that's definitely how I'm going to perceive it then mm -hmm. as well. Um, and then Marie says, but there are barriers to empathy and we all have them. I think what, what, to we build do. on that curiosity piece, you know, one of the ways that uh, that author, um, he does all these videos on uh, Facebook. His, not, his name is Simon Sinek, and he has some great stuff and very, like, short clips. You should definitely check him out. One of the things he said was, he said it like this, I need to understand what you go through. Like, I need to understand what you go through. And I think that, um, you know, as... I'm going I'm to read what I got here because I got some powerful stuff. So I... Cause I took some notes. I wanna. So before you uh -huh. read that, I wanna. I wanna um, talk about what uh, Maria said. Yeah. But there are barriers to empathy, and we yeah. all have them. I agree yeah. with that, and that's kind of what I discussed mm -hmm. earlier with emotional mm -hmm. empathy. So a barrier, uh, one of the barriers that I can think of when it comes to empathy is the emotional mm -hmm. empathy, where there's there's too there's so much there's so but there's an overload of empathy provided mm -hmm. to where I'm not able to really. Um, see how the other individual is even seeing it because I'm flooded with my own emotion mm -hmm. and, then there, and then the cognitive empathy is only just seeing it from their side but there's no emotion at all it's just yeah. I just okay I see your yeah. perspective but what are you doing yeah, with that perspective no action. so if you see what I there's no action yeah. applied to it so yeah there's barriers mm -hmm. to empathy which is what I stated mm -hmm. earlier with when you have cognitive empathy it's more of like a okay yeah, yeah. I see but okay but then Emotional empathy, oh, it could be overbearing, yeah. where you're you're clouding your 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 um your judgment and clouding what actions you yeah. take. I think another right barrier now. too is you know people who've been in bad relationships. You know what I'm saying? Like, and now like you're ruining the relationship you're in because everything is imperfect. You know, uh, Jim says ag agree oh, with Jim Maria. Oh, Jim says agree with. Oh, you Go gonna ahead. read it? You oh, you gonna read? Oh, a uh, Jim. As Jim says, agree with um, agree with Maria. She is right. People can watch a commercial with dogs in cages mm. and be emotionally upset, but see children in cages at the border and blame the parents for trying to come into mm -hmm. the U.S. So, and and then Maria said cultural mm -hmm. barriers. All right. So let's look. Um, if we learn anything from the Holocaust or the Tuskegee experiment or Tulsa, Oklahoma riots or v the Vietnam War or Pearl Harbor or 9-11 or Myanmar persecution of Muslims or Israeli occupation, you know, on Palestinian territory or the assassination of MLK or Malcolm X or JFK and on and on to the tune of mass incarceration and the 13th Amendment. Um, mm -hmm. It is that if we forego empathy for human life that's a threat to any society every nation any. yes and, and 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 to to lack empathy is really a detriment to your own self because you might be that person who lacks empathy for a person or, or for a type of people or for human life and then you're in need of somebody's help and there's nobody there to help you because of the barriers that you set up or because you allowed your own. So I feel like there's a lot of people in America with black hearts right now, which is what Jim just talked about. You know what I'm saying? Uh, go. Well, that's what I think cognitive empathy, because I'm going to read Clarice's mm -hmm. comment. There are multiple layers and levels to empathy. Remember, the polar opposite is narcissism. Mm -hmm. So the narcissistic partners and behaviors become the impasse mm -hmm. without them ever knowing. So you got to be very clear exactly. and careful. Ooh, yeah. powerful, powerful, yeah. Clarice. So um what i was gonna say was um to what you said brandon mm -hmm. about um about empaths where i because now with the barriers i, I want to see if i can say this in a way that makes sense um being 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 an empath uh, that oh that's what i was gonna say cognitive empathy because I, I lost myself mm -hmm. for a little bit so cognitive mm -hmm. empathy i feel that I honestly feel that most of us have cognitive empathy or most mm -hmm. people have cognitive empathy where they can see the perspective, mm -hmm. but there's no, 
It's just like, I see what mm-hmm. you're saying, but, and that's what I feel a lot of people do where they see the other side. They mm-hmm. see the other person's pain, but it's like, oh, well, that's, that's your perspective. When I look at the, when but, I look at the three but, empathies, it's like, you know, cognitive, emotional, and then compassionate, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a process. I look at it like a flow of water and you have to get to emotional empathy. And if there's a, if there's a block at each one of those, then I think you risk losing all empathy because I would say that, that people lack mm-hmm. empathy, period. I think even now people lack empathy, yeah, period. Like, like, right. Empathy, I think period. people lack cognitive. Yeah, there's, I yeah. think people lack cognitive empathy at, at this yeah. point that we're living in now. Yeah. At this point right now, absolutely. No, no, no. I was just mm-hmm. speaking more in terms of like maybe in the past or whatever, or there, there was a time that there was cognitive empathy where you recognize it, but there was no emotion. Mm-hmm. But now in the global, I'll say global climate that we're in, because if you got New Zealand, Australia, and all them protesting mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. well, then yeah, that's global yeah. climate that yeah. we're in. There's a lack of yep. empathy across yep. the board. So, um, so, I mean, that's, that's, the reason why, that's the reason why I said earlier mm-hmm. about what people post on social media, there's so much impact. That, if we want to speak intent versus yeah. impact, there's a lot of impact to what people post if they yeah. know, knowingly not care about how it makes another person so feel. I, I post it because I, I said I can elaborate said. on the, the whole hater thing, right? I think impact versus intent also includes like, we living in a time in America where to post about racism or to post the things that I post, which are facts, you know, and the headline, obviously, I didn't make the headline, but but to to post about racism and systemic racism is to you then being called a racist. Like racism is so Amer- I seen a, a picture and I posted mm-hmm. it that racism is so American that it now you're the divisive one for pointing out police brutality is happening to black people. For example, like people, people say black lives matter me, you know, people get mad. and They say, no, all lives matter. And they make something say something else. And maybe that, maybe to your point, they do have cognitive empathy, but the problem is they don't want to have it. So I need to make then your protest an inconvenience to me and now make it antagonistic so I can disrespect you because I do have cognitive empathy. Yes. And that's what, and so Ever just said what I was mm-hmm. thinking. See, me, me and Ever, we hear. Cognitive seems to be what America is running on. That's why I said earlier, I think most people are cognitive of what uh, uh, mm-hmm. had that. Americans can see all kinds of terrible things happening, but cannot find the connector to themselves mm-hmm. so they can be dis- so they can be dismissive. It all it is only when it affects them directly that their empathy status okay. changes. And that that right there is where it moves to emotional empathy, where it's it's under emotional. Mm-hmm. Because I told y'all there was an under-emotional um, empathy and an over-emotional mm-hmm. empathy. So then when you go from cognitive to emotional, it's like, well, I mean, well, I'm only going to apply emotion to my empathy when it's involving me. Kind of like what I stated earlier mm-hmm. about the virus, right? Where the COVID-19 is just going rampant, mm-hmm. right? Where almost 200,000 people mm-hmm. are gone. But honey, I'm, I ain't wearing no mask because mm-hmm. I don't... But as soon as something happens to one of your family members or close friends... Now you want to be like, yep. oh my God, wear your yep. mask. All these anti-mask folks are just blowing my mind mm-hmm. right now. So that, so yeah, being cognitive, I feel, uh, as I stated earlier, is where I think America's running on yeah. right now. You're, you're cognitive, you're aware, you see it. You only see it, but there's no feeling behind what yep. you see. So um, Prophet Glenn and I started studying the book of Amos this week. And um, let me tell you something. So just thinking about the knowledge that I have about the scriptures and all that, because, you know, I got to give that piece Um, In the Holy Bible, there's not one nation that Yahuwah Elohim allowed to continually prosper that devalued human life, whether it was slavery, which is human, which slavery is human trafficking. Think about it. Um, Murder, (coughs) murder, Mm -hmm. abortion, et cetera. Um, Every nation in the Holy Book that did not deal with the Most High's creation, creation, human life in righteous order was destroyed and will be destroyed again. Think about Egypt. Think about Babylon. So it's crazy to me. Now I got to address the people who call themselves Christians or the people who believe in in a God, because, um, you know, when when I think about it, like the scripture is clear, confess your sins to one another so that you might be healed. People forget about that. Right. Like 
you're confessing your sins so that you can be healed. So what does that say? That the way that the, the way that we are built, we're built to live life out together and to bear one another's burdens. And when I get it off my chest, right? That's why that even exists. Let me, I got something to get off my chest. Let me call Andre. I got something to get off my chest, like you fill in the blank. And when you talk to that person, how do you feel after? So much better, right? Because it was weighing on you. It was like a burden. Um, the scripture also says, if you have an ought with your brother, leave your offering on the altar, go make it right, then come back. So God is like, don't even come to me until you have made it right with your brother. So it's a lot of people whose offering is not being accepted, you know, uh, rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Uh, so, you know, like we said before, just to emphasize, uh, to emphasize the definition of empathy, it's the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. Um, you know, call me naive, but I feel like we're all built with that. I feel like Yahuwah put that, if, we're, if every human life, if every human creation is made in the image of the Most High, he gave us that. There's these things in society, you know, we know about our history. So how could Larry Kudlow, the top economic advisor in the Trump administration say systemic racism is not real? How can they say that? How can Bill Barr, the, the, the top law enforcement, you know what I'm saying, legal, uh, the attorney general, you know, the, the person who interprets the laws for the entire nation, how can he in one breath say that systemic racism doesn't exist? Like how? How? And so I think it's that counter empathy. So let's add on to what you said earlier, like, and what I said earlier, like the fragmented empathy until it happens to somebody who looks like them or until it hits close to home or until it hits, you know, like look at even how they use Democrat and Republican. And it's easy, you know, I'm not trying to be mad political on here, but I'm just using the things that I see happening today that cause people to not be empathetic. For example, I don't know if this is true, but allegedly Jared Kushner was like, you know, the response to coronavirus looks like what it looks like because it was only happening in blue Democrat cities. You know what I'm saying? So y'all mean to tell me that you was like, let the virus do what the virus is going to do, open everything back up because it was ravaging Democrat cities. So you see how, like, allegedly, I don't know if that's 100% true, but the, the fact that that story came out shows that they're using labels, right? And they've always done that. And which is why, like, you know, it's a powerful thing to know that race the, the scientific race theory is BS. A human is a human. We got the same organs. It's a chemical in our skin that makes our skin a different color, but we, we are the same. Um, so I think empathy is a foundational belief to anyone who believes in a God. I studied world religions and the, it's, it's in there. Um, in my faith as a Hebrew, which means Ibrim, which means to cross over from my own will into righteousness, Empathy is essential, but I see a lot of people who say they believe in a Jesus Christ. I'm like, y'all must be serving the European Jesus, you know, because look, <laughs> I say that because, I mean, there, how can you not, how can you call yourself a believer in a God and not have empathy for his creation? You know what I'm saying? Uh, Jim Cassidy says that's what Reagan did with AIDS. See? It was the gay. Exactly. So what? Yep. And then Maria says race is. is a myth. Yep. You know, so I used to be comfortable with the label Christian until I was led by the by the Ruach of Yahushua Hamashiach, in other words, the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, to look further into how that even that term came about. You know what I'm saying? Like Christian, I believe, is a divisive term, and it meant all these things that I found myself not wanting to be associated with because I don't see the people who call themselves Christian um, exercising empathy. I don't see it. Who oh, they be the hypocritical yeah. of them. And, and, and let me say this too, that's why I'm politically agnostic at this point, because I see both sides as, you know, both sides point out each other's hypocrisy, but where's the action at the end of it, right? So the Democrats talk about Republicans, but all Congress went home before Labor Day and still ain't no stimulus passed. But Canada passed a four-month stimulus. New Zealand shut everything down. They, in, actu in actuality, I think there is a total lack of empathy in our government based on the fact that they say, you know what, we, are, we want our economy to be good. But you know what I can rejoice on? That the truth always comes out. And the truth is, we don't stimulate the economy. If we did, how is the economy doing better now with unemployment higher? 
Does that make any sense? So you can go and look at the numbers and statistics and you can see that the economy is doing better now with a higher unemployment rate. So y'all made the connection. I know we're told, see, that thank you, Jim, boop. So y'all make the connection on which, which you want to make it on. Say, listen, he said boop twice tonight, so thank, <laughs> thank you, you for the two boots. So, you know, today we have Christians and, enti and entire denominations of people who say they believe in Jesus with no display of empathy. I believe this is the same group. I think we're in cycles. I think the human condition, we're in cycles, and we can choose where we're going to fall at or be in the cycle. Um, but I believe this is the same group that Martin Luther King Jr. wrote to when he talked about the moderate Christian and Jew, the majority white moderate Christian Jew, which is still the majority in America today, who at the time felt that the so-called Negro should wait for freedom, liberty, and justice in a country whose motto is that for all. Ooh. Maria said the hypocrisy and the moral inversion. See, Ooh, child. That, that only what they say is, is good and right and righteous. Listen, let me tell you what I saw today. So on The View, um, Sonny Hostin, I don't know if you all know who Sonny Hostin is. She's a former lawyer, former prosecutor. She's on The View. Um, for those of you who probably don't watch The View. But anyway, Sonny Hostin made a statement that we, I said on a pop-up and I almost passed out on the floor because I was like, didn't I just mm. say this? So, and, and it touched me because I'm like, wow, she's saying it on national television and I just talked about this on the pop-up. So I don't know if it's just Sonny Hostin and I are like, I don't know, <laughs> like we're connected mm -hmm. or something. Um, Justin said, I watched The View religiously. Me too, Justin. Oh my gosh, yes. So Sonny Hostin made a statement about um, people in the White House or just pe the people in Congress everywhere, all the, fo all the, Everybody, everybody that's in politics, mm -hmm. everybody, is lacks the moral mm -hmm. compass. What happened to the moral mm -hmm. compass? The moral compass is gone. So it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, it does not matter where you sit politically. Yep. It does not matter where mm -hmm. you sit. There is a racial divide in this mm -hmm. country. What can be done to end the racial yep. divide? The moral compass needs to mm -hmm. be back because it's nope. not here. It's yep. gone. So I and I, and I, I wonder for me, I was just like, ugh, Sonny. I'm and this is her. why I asked the question. And I wonder if if a system that's built on the inequity of people and the inequity of God's creation and the inequity of humans, like can that system be reformed? Even Dr. Cornell West said that I don't he doesn't see, you know, he's hope he hopes, you know, but he doesn't <laughs> Maria said moral compass doesn't See? pay. And and that's I mean that's the yeah. reality. That's the reality, Maria. Absolutely. Moral and compass I, doesn't I think pay. That's where we are. But and I'm so, just like, Lord, like we're gonna be further divided. Yes. So I mean, I think <laughs> I think political compass. divisiveness is at the root of both political parties. I mean, it's in the framework. It's already been decided. We we recycle the same issues over and over and nothing really gets done. We're recycling health care, we're recycling abortion, we wanna undo Roe v you know, Wade, why don't we, un why don't we undo um, Dred Scott versus Sanford? Like, how, why don't we undo, look, look, we, there was a police officer I seen, I don't know if he was a police officer for sure, but he was on TikTok. And basically he was like, I got a oh. family, I got a quota. And Saniva hold on, let me, finish, Filo, let me do you know who point. Sonny? Let me, yeah, let me just finish this point real quick. Okay. So like, there was a police officer, he was on TikTok and he was just like, um, uh, like, it doesn't matter if there's good police officers, because at the end of the day, he has a family to feed. There's quotas. You know, he has a quota. There's an arrest quota. There's a traffic violation quota. And so at the end of the day, he was like, it doesn't matter if there's good cops. So all the people who, you know, like to say, oh, it does, you know, there's good cops, too. But what is a good cop in a bad situation? In a bad in a policy. Bad policy yeah. in, the, in the framework of things. So it's time to un we need to undo some of these things privatized prisons shouldn't be legal like why is that legal why is there still quotas because as long as there's quotas we're going to continue to have the most people incarcerated in the in a developed nation in the entire world but yet our slogan I already talked about Oklahoma. Yet, uh, you sure did but yet our slogan is land of the free home of the brave okay oh powerful um, so, I, I, uh, Saniva said money is the root of all evil ever since one of the best memes I have seen 
was of a Native American asking this question. What if I were to tell you that the left wing and the right wing belong to the mm. same bird? Ooh! And then Jim, Jim says, because no one wants to compromise, See? boop. That's a boop. And then Justin told you to yeah. preach, even though I was interrupting no, you flow. No, you good. Yeah, I, th- I think that's... But yeah, I so... Think that's where we, I think that's yeah. where we are. And I think, um, you know, we just have to understand that. And my prayer is that we all be full of love because as time goes on, we have to have enough empathy in, to help. Some of these people can be a- awakened. Some of these people, like some of, I am friends with white supremacists. I am. Some of my friends are racist. And guess, you know why I still talk to them? Because they're raising children. Because I ask myself that, like, why do I talk to this person who's, who doesn't see things from my, who's on, who's the person that we're talking about, who has empathy, but yet still wants to make excuses? Like, in the conversation in which we're talking about police accountability, and removing qualified immunity or defund the police, people would be like, all cops ain't bad. Is that not deafening? Are you not turning a cheek to what I'm... Well, you diminished what yes. I said. You diminished what I said then. If you're, if you're saying that and you have a counter argument yes. to that, then you're diminishing yes. my point. Uh, Suniva said can, but people are unwilling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, people are unwilling. And, and that the two, what you said about loving one another, that was my last part of my mm. message says we could be the driving force to be united as a whole and have more control as to how we display love towards one mm. another that's that's what i ended mm-hmm. it with that's what and you just said it having love mm. for one another and right now there's a racial there's a political divide a racial divide there's just so many divides mm-hmm. honey it's just it's 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 very 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 crazy. And, uh, you know, um, people like to talk about Martin Luther King, but he said uh, rioting is the language of the unheard. Um, you know, and a Fox News host just said that we should treat Brian Kilmeade just said we should treat protesters like like we treat Al Qaeda. Oh yeah, you, yeah, you, you sent me that earlier. Um, but we ain't saying that on here. It just mm-hmm. like I just saw that. Like, so you mean to tell me protesters? And I wish that see because sometimes I think uh, a a lack of empathy or not showing it. What's up, Cedric? Um, not showing empathy is 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 really a detriment to your own self because there are. If we just look at police brutality as a Black American issue. There's white people being killed by police too, and I go like I said it before, and I'm saying it again. That's not reported though. It is. That's not it reported. Is. It is. It is. If you is it, it reported? Is. Well, it's reported, but is it reported to the capacity of? Let me. Black nah, it's not. People. But let me tell you that, that. That's what I mean. So, like your typical person would not even know about a white person being um but murdered that's what by I police. Think. Your typical person is not going to know. That's why I exist. And that's why I post what I post on my social media. And I go to these conservative Republican websites and Facebook and all that. And I post on there. I'm like, do y'all know about Tony Temple in 2016 who was killed by Dallas PD the same way George Floyd was? So I go and I'm like, and, and, and I'm like, look, so these protesters who are not, it's not all black people out there protesting. It's all American. These people are Americans out there protesting. And so they're protesting for you too. But you can't even understand that because you just see that it, they, they keep killing us over and over. And I'm just wondering, like, how many does it take? Does it have, like you said, does it have to get to where it's somebody that they're related to that then, you know, they, they feel something for? I want to read this part right here yeah. before we go to the comments. Um, as a general rule, people who want or need your empathy don't just need you to understand, which is cognitive empathy, and they certainly don't just need you to feel their pain or worse to burst into tears alongside them emotionally. You know what I'm saying? That, that'd probably be emotional empathy and that'd probably be along the lines of sympathy. Instead, they need you to understand and sympathize with what they're going through and crucially either take or help them to take action to resolve the problem, which is compassionate empathy. So it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm there, you know, you know, it's interesting about there's uh, uh, some people in, a, um, I think it, I forget the people who they are and see because there's so much details up in here. But there's an African culture who like they had uh, someone who sits. This was this person's only job. They sit with the person in the village and they take the burdens of the people in the village. It's like some kind of they were like some kind of minister. And so they just sit and they sit with you. And they take on the burden and take it from you. 
I just like like I thought that's amazing. That's amazing. That mm -hmm. is like the one hundred mm -hmm. of compassionate empathy. So we don't need you to just cry with us. 100%. We don't need you to just laugh with us. We don't need you to just understand. But at the end of laughing, crying, you know, and feeling sorry for us, like help us actually change what's what's happening. And that's what the protesters are really doing. And that's why they ain't stopping. Good. They're still going on in Louisville. Yeah. I can say that. Because I'm here in Louisville, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. um, justice for Breonna Taylor. Arrest the um, of Everett Taylor. says, um, yes. So Everett says, all lives are not created equal in the eyes of America, no matter the words on a piece mm. of paper. And I feel like I love this generation because I don't think this generation is going to allow what has happened over and over again. Because, um, you know, even asking my, my dad, who's 58, nearly 60, I asked him, you know, and I say this on the show before, but how much has really changed? Now, I, I mean, no disrespect to the progressive movements that have been made, but tell me that's not under threat, too. You know, like for every right they grant, like, here's something to come challenge that. Like, I feel like there's four wrongs with one right. There's yeah. like, it's like we get, we go, we step up once and get knocked down yeah. three times and then get yes. bumped up. And, and like, that's why I said we recycle. So essentially, we're recycling the same issues and the same problems but I just wonder you know I ask myself how come countries like Sweden and Norway and all that like why it seems like their governments have some type of empathy for their people yes they pay high taxes but guess what look what they get in return and when their people go to prison look it up their people come out with degrees and even because I can say I've I had a soldier do some horrible things horrible, unspeakable things, 51 pages of things that he had did to children, um, just very horrible things. I mean, them alphabet boys came to get him, FBI, CIA, all of that. Do you know, like, I had to go see him, and do you know when I saw him, like, I just prayed that he could find God and find a way to forgive himself. Because guess what? Like he's locked up. He's doing time for what he did. He'll probably never, he got to live with the damage that he knows that he did. You know what I'm saying? He got to live with that. And, and mm -hmm. I, I value every, And so that just goes to show I have compassionate empathy for every, every human life. Every, it's required. If you believe in a God, it's required. And you can't let nobody, like Ever just said, you can't let nobody, no matter what, on what piece of paper make it make you feel like it's not so there's people right now like who are like hey that person deserves this and that but guess what a human being deserves to be reconciled with the most high so my prayer was that this person this human though he did these horrible things it's like man i hope that you can get connected and that's how i treated him when i talked to him you know what i'm saying like you you already mm -hmm. you already locked up for the rest of your life so what what is me being doing anything contrary? I had to get his gear. You know the whole process. I had to turn clean his gear. Mm. I had to turn it in, and it was just like you know what, a. Hey. So. Yeah, ever said um, other countries actually address the issues and not attempt to make money for the top one percent of the mm. money makers. That's a whole other mm -hmm. topic right there. But maybe um, just maybe that is the biggest. But. That's that's where the lack of empathy. Well, yeah. No. Anyway. What 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 if yeah. what if this? What if capitalism in the way that it's practiced, right? Because because in America we call a lot of things something that it's not. Like Chris, this we call this Christian, you know, and all these people are Christian, but they're clearly antagonistic mm -hmm. to everything Yahusha or the one they call Jesus represented, right? So what if capitalism, as it's practiced here? Um, is the root of, because somebody said earlier, money is the root of all evil, and I wanted to correct them. The scripture actually says, for the love of money is the root of all evil, and people have pierced their, their own selves doing whatever it takes to get that money. From little Ray Ray selling crack to his mom, to, you know, um, people uh, lying about Adderall and Oxycontin, that it's not addictive when they knew it was addictive, and they got all these people, they, mm. how many people lost their lives for, from that drug? You know what I'm saying? So mm. in both of those yeah. situations, it was like the love of money, you know, pierced their own cells with sorrow. Because you can't tell me that people who came up with Oxycontin 
lay their head down to sleep at night. And if they do and they haven't repented, my prayer is that they can't sleep until they do repent. Oof. So I hope everyone That's listening deep. is is uplifted and edified and understand the reason why we need to have empathy, especially right now. I feel like it's critical. And the things that are coming through the airwaves, I don't care if you're not a political person or if you're not watching the news or if you if you're like, you can't unplug from this. This is not the time to be on the sidelines and just be like, I'm just going to live my life and not be connected to nobody because that's not that's not a reality that most people have. Even with COVID-19, right? We're all, so, you know, uh, physically distancing. We're physically distancing and stuff like that with COVID-19. Some people are not. Some people have to work. Some people telework. But no matter what, how you live in America, everything going on affects you. And your response to it, I, your yeah. response to it should be an empathetic, uh, an empathetic response. And anybody who's not, I would, I would either try to get them to ask them the right questions so they can discover the right answers or reevaluate your relationship with them. Because, I mean, even if, the, even if this pandemic wasn't going on, Brandon and I would still be mm -hmm. talking. Because COVID-19 does not mm -hmm. stop what would have mm -hmm. happened if there was no COVID-19. Because um, I, I honestly feel like just due to the climate that we're in, COVID-19 doesn't even play a factor. Yes, we're in the middle of a pandemic, mm -hmm. but it does not play into the police brutality that's going on. It doesn't play mm -hmm. into the racial mm -hmm. divide. It doesn't play into that. COVID-19 doesn't play mm -hmm. into that. But what is happening is COVID-19 has amplified it in a mm -hmm. way because now, folks, a lot of people are teleworking. A lot of people have access to the news a lot more. They have a lot more time to access mm -hmm. the news and access the mm -hmm. media. Um, so that's the only mm -hmm. difference. But as far as what is going on in this country, COVID-19 ain't got nothing to do with it. But with COVID-19, I want to I wanna add something to what you said about the 3,000 um, that, that um, perished for 9-11. Mm -hmm. I want to say I'm hoping that once this pandemic is over, once it's over and done with, we're recognizing the lives of the ones that died, that, that mm. died from COVID-19 mm. too. Because what I've noticed is there's so many people that will turn a blind eye to that 6%, mm -hmm. but are quick to talk about Jews and other folks that have died and, and, and murdered. Like, they're quick to go mm -hmm. elsewhere. But like this virus, 6%, it should be 0%. Mm -hmm. And it can be, yeah. Right? And it can be, and it could have been. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just feel, and the, the, and the thing is, is, it's not to take away from the other lives that were mm -hmm. lost. But I'm just hoping that we, we as a country and we as Americans can, can, can really mm -hmm. show love towards mm -hmm. one another right now, um, and not be mm -hmm. selfish. And I say not be selfish based off of what I've already talked about earlier mm -hmm. about being cognizant of what you're posting on social mm -hmm. media. Impact versus intent based on what mm -hmm. Everett said. The, 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 my intentions, uh, my intentions, Brandon's intentions, mm -hmm. and I'm sure all of you that are watching his intentions, is to post things that are going to uplift, uh, that make us smile mm -hmm. and uh, all that. But if, you, if a person is purposely trying to post something that they don't care about the other person's emotions, they don't care about how the other person is going to mm -hmm. feel about it, those folks need to really... They need to really do a self-evaluation and do a self-reflection mm -hmm. because that's sad because there are people that I know, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and I hate to say this. I really hate to say this. There are people that I know personally that, I, that are on my Facebook mm -hmm. that are just posting things and not, not, and not, not caring about what other people are yeah. saying or feeling. They're just not yeah. caring. And it saddens yeah. me. It saddens me that I know people that just don't care. They're just going to post it because I said mm -hmm. what I said. And it's like, are you really... Uh, like you, so you don't care that mm -hmm. much because you don't know how the other person can mm -hmm. be affected by you intentionally trying to say what you say without without care. That is sad mm -hmm. to me. Um, Justin has a question. Justin says, "Oh, it's a long question." I think. Oh, do either of you guys think that COVID nineteen needed to happen to bring awareness to everything that's been happening in our country? In my view and opinion, we all need to sit down and be present in the moment to reflect on everything that's happened and what needs to change for us as a nation to move mm. forward together. So yes, for our mm. answer, 
yes. Um, it, it did, and that's kind of what I said earlier about it, it has nothing to do with the racial divide and everything, but it, it definitely brought more attention to it because of COVID-19. Mm-hmm. So, yes, I absolutely feel that COVID-19 put everybody on mm-hmm. pause. Um, but in addition to that, I do feel like it exposed people that are mm-hmm. racist and it exposed folks that uh, people are not being held accountable for their actions. So in mm-hmm. EO, we are taught to think type post mm-hmm. anyway. Think about what you're going to mm-hmm. say what kind of effect it's going to have, type, make sure that it's, it's, it's uh, with dignity and respect, post it, and then ensure that the message of, of unity and a, and a message of dignity and respect is implemented in mm-hmm. your post. If that's not implemented in your mm-hmm. post, then don't, then don't post yeah. it. And, and, and a lot of folks are not, a lot of folks are not doing that. Uh, there's a lot of folks that I'm seeing on my news feed that are not. Uh, that are not doing that, unfortunately. Mm. It doesn't take away from them being who they are. I'm not saying that these people are evil people and terrible people or anything like that. I'm just saying that mm-hmm. they're just refusing to show the empathy, which is what this whole conversation Yeah, I, I don't think, naturally, I don't think it needed to happen for uh, for anything to bring awareness to anything. I think it's more, but I do think it is much more of a catastrophe because of our structurally racist systems. I think racism has been on height since the 2016 election. You know what I'm saying? Since, since the mm-hmm. 2016 campaigning and 2014, yeah. 2014, 2015, that's when I started to post more and some of my friends who are different races than me got upset at me for what I was posting. And you know what I'm saying? And I, so I wanna add that onto the other side of of what you're saying too. I'm I'm not going to censor myself. I am going to think about my message and my intent. Uh, but but there's also a spiritual element behind what I'm uh, what I'm posting. For example, I think some stuff need to be called out. Like I'm going to call it out. And so if my friends are posting something like that, you know how I call them out. Like, do you really mean like what this post, especially if it's a close friend that I really care about. If it's not, if it's just somebody I don't know who's on my Facebook, because I've added people on my Facebook that I don't know. Um, but if it's somebody that I really know, I'd be yeah. like, is this what you really mean? Or I'll send them a message or we'll have a conversation about it, especially now. Um, but I just want to say this too. If you are a person who feels motivated to use your social media to support, because social media is used to support political um, parties, and no, we're not supposed to do that in the military. Um, but if you're going to use social media to stand for justice, and just expect to be called out, like expect it, because look, if you stand up for righteousness, truth, or justice, you know, and on the spiritual aspect, he said you'll be persecuted for my namesake. So you're gonna be persecuted just for certain. But that's where empathy's so used, though. But that's empathy, though, right? Isn't I that empathy so. when you're calling for that? So that's yeah. whatever it said. There's but, those are the haters, but I'm right? Saying, those are the ones that but are. But I'm saying, like, you're going to be, you might be castigated for a post. That's a good word, huh? Castigated for posting what, you what, you're, what you're posting because it's challenging the status quo. Like, posting something, you know, uh, empathetic for George Floyd, and then somebody might be like, you know, he had this record. You know, he beat up a pregnant woman. Like, you know what I mean? The, but still. But what is your intent, exactly. though? Your intent is still, there's still empathy. So the le- the, the root of what you're combating mm-hmm. them on is rooted it in is. empathy, though. So mm-hmm. that's why I'm like, I'm not mm-hmm. even going to be upset to if I see you going back and forth with somebody because what your intent is, is rooted mm-hmm. in empathy. So combat them mm-hmm. all day because they're not showing empathy at all. They're refused. They're, the other folks that are arguing your point are not mm-hmm. seeing it from your perspective Agreed. because they're choosing not mm-hmm. to. So yep. um, Justin says, yes, I've always said that this current president is the result payback for every American who didn't want a black man in office for mm. eight years. Mm. Mm. But back to empathy mm-hmm. though. Yes. I feel that with the, with the fact of you going in well i, I mean i, I don't want to say going in on somebody but um i see, oh my friend jen is watching hey, hey jen. jen um um i feel that even with you going in on somebody on like what 
they're posting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like it's like what I said before, it's rooted mm -hmm. in empathy because you're trying to have them realize mm -hmm. what they may be missing. Let, oh, let me address um, that. So, so I have also, I've grown and matured. Instead of going in on somebody about what they post, I ask them a question. Well, I won't no, say no, go no, in. But I, but I want to <laughs> clarify, like, what I actually do. I actually ask the right questions to get the right answers. Like, I'll tell, I'll there tell we somebody, go. I'll be there like, read go. out loud what you just wrote. Um, or is this really what you think? Is this really how you feel? Really? You know what I mean? Like, ask, ask <laughs> people a question because if I meet, if, if, I, if their intent is to do it in ugliness, then we're just going to be ugly responding to one another. But if I just ask you a question and, mm -hmm. you know, like these are for the people that I know and sometimes people that I don't know. Um, but if like, then I'll, I'll ask a question. Is that really what you think? Is that really how you feel? Cause it makes that person take a second thought, take a second pause. And then you, you'll, you'll see if this is somebody, somebody maybe you should go back and forth with online or if you're not going to get anywhere. If there's no common ground, or yeah, and then you'll know, yeah, because you'll know if they're if they're gonna take a pause to think mm -hmm. about it, or they really just posted it. If you you'll know that the root of their post is just to be mm -hmm. messy, or just to be petty, or just to, or like because people like drama and and like an mm -hmm. argument, and they 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 don't want to get to a solution. They don't want to get to a to a resolution. They just want to post it, yep. and they don't they they love the and that and that's what I'm saying. So the intent behind someone like that. That, that's the kind of stuff that needs to be avoided mm -hmm. because your intent behind what you're saying is that you're not even trying, you're not even trying to engage mm -hmm. in a way that's going to benefit somebody yes. else because your intent is already in the wrong place. Your intent is already that your, your intent is terrible. Mm -hmm. So with your intent being terrible, mm -hmm. yeah, then yeah, you're not being aware of what you're, um, you're, you're, you're refusing to be aware of what you're saying. Jen says, good point. There's a difference between talking at someone and speaking with them. Oh, and then Everett says, I sort of make it a debate. Ask them to defend the words. If they can defend the word is one thing, but most just can't. And then, and for those people, I see a person who is just mm. being messy or for that matter, I am finally seeing the truth then. Mm. Mm. So and then Jen says sometimes all it takes is one question to find out that the conversation is even mm. worth it. Yes, Jen and Jen and I have had phone a uh, phone conversation a while back about mm -hmm. that. No, well, not that in particular, but just about stuff that you choose to engage in and stuff that you like. Yeah. You know what? It's a lost cause. We just not yeah. even go. Like you ain't hearing mm -hmm. me. You're not listening to me. You are just wanting. You're talking at me, and you're not even trying to hear what I gotta mm -hmm. say. So, okay, bye, Felicia. Um, and then Clarice says, uh, hey, cousin, I totally agree with you. Then apply and continue until you know for sure what's mm. up. Yes. So, yep. yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's it, and you have to, well, I, I don't want to even say pick your battles, but like knowing who, mm -hmm. like knowing who to engage with where you know they'll receive mm -hmm. it versus the ones that you just know are not which, going to. Which ties so. into something else. You have to protect your space. You have to protect your aura. You got to protect your spirit. Come on, You got to protect your empathy. Because if you just give it out, like you could be enabling somebody. If you just give it out, you're, you're putting yourself in a bad situation. Like I learned a long time ago at an early age, I was, I've always been very generous. Empathy came easy for me too. Like I, I fed the block whenever we went grocery shopping. You know what I'm saying? I fed the entire block. Like, like I wanted to take care of the homeless. I wanted to do all these things, but I realized something. You know what? You kind of, if I give out everything I have, then I'm not going to have nothing. And I need to be wise and to pray about who am I supposed to help? And then who am I enabling? Because I didn't always know. So you got to protect your space and protect your empathy. So that way you don't become the, the, the non-empathetic person. Like you get burned or hurt by somebody. And now it's like, oh, I ain't helping nobody else out. You know what I mean? Or you get burned in a relationship right. and you like, oh, I ain't date, I ain't dating nobody no more because they just all whatever. All people are this. Mm -hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. Cause Jen says knowing where to put your energy and yes. why. Um and Everett says it's like people who try to talk loud in the conversation too, so they have to be <laughs> right. It does not make them right, just louder in the yeah. conversation. Oh, I've had so I've had a boss. Um actually my boss after Everett. Mm -hmm. Um, did that with me. I'm not going to go into detail. Uh, Jen knows this person. Um, I ain't going to say his name because he ain't relevant <laughs> enough to say his name. But 
he was one of those individuals that would talk uh, louder. So like, I would say, I would try to speak my piece and I'm calm. Like, I'm not raising my voice. Like, I'm not mm -hmm. doing that. And he would talk louder. So I'm thinking like, so just cause you got louder don't mean you right. So I'm just saying like, I just be like, okay, Roger, See? fine. Cause I mean, you, you're, you're my supervisor. You're gonna, you said what you said. So you're not gonna mm. hear me and mm. ugh, whatever. Mm. So um, I definitely dealt with that a lot. Mm. Like with whatever it said. Um, yeah, my boss after ever did was like that where it's, it's just, you just wouldn't even, you weren't even, you didn't even make an attempt to hear what I had to say or mm. listen. Like Shay said, listen, 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 listen. Listen, mm -hmm. listen Linda, listen. So, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like it. And I mean, I just really want to, uh, I think the last thing that I have to say to give a little bit more weight to the whole idea of empathy for those who believe in a higher power, who believe in God. He said the greatest commandment, you know, first of all, it's funny how this came up because they were trying to trip up Yahushua. You know, like, which one is the most important commandment? You know, they were trying to trip him up. But, you know, his reply was to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And the second is like unto the first. And upon these mm -hmm. hang all the laws of the prophets. So, in other words, it's like it's so simple to live holy and righteous. To love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. To love your neighbor like yourself. But, but he said loving your neighbor as as yourself is paramount and is equal to loving God. I'm laughing at what Jen said. I'm, I'm, la I'm yeah. laughing at what Jen said. I'm no, sorry. Um, Jen says the louder the uh, oh whatever said rank does not make right either. Absolutely. Um, Jen says the loudest uh, one in the room is the weakest one mm. in the room. Frank Lucas voice. Mm. <laughs> she said she had to do that. And then uh, Jen says no, Brandon. The last thing you have to say is a closing I like prayer. It. Wink. Okay. Yeah. Boop. That's a boop, boop to you. Um, so Jim just booped you without booping you. But yeah, um, I yeah, um, I dealt with loud supervisors um, in the past, which is interesting because like I dealt with loud supervisors, and then like there was some that were just amazing. Well, Everett was one of them. But like I dealt with like toxic leadership, and then I dealt with people like Everett who was amazing. That I went to my next new station was like. Ugh. My God, what's going mm -hmm. on? And then coming to Fort Knox, I was like in heaven because everybody mm -hmm. was amazing. So like it's just, it was like a, a roller coaster of like I had great leaders and I had toxic mm -hmm. leaders and I had great. So I, you learn from both. I've learned from the bad and the mm -hmm. good um, of those mm -hmm. leaders because um, one of those toxic leaders tried to reach out to me. But that's another. I don't want to. <laughs> I'm not gonna go into that. Yeah, but yeah, I dig it. But yeah, I think that's it. I think it um, is, Brandon. I think we. Yeah, so I think we're going to close out with a little prayer yeah. that Jim requested. All right. Yes, yeah, so um, let okay. us pray. Um, Father, Yahuwah Elohim, we come before you asking you to mold us and to make us like you and to strengthen us to be able to act like you and to live like you. And in the midst of challenges or whatever people are facing from the loss of life or, you know, uh, challenges in their relationships, uh, whether it be family or um, romantic relationships we ask you to strengthen um, any, everyone under the sound of our voices and those who are connected to those under the sound of our voices to be able to exercise this empathy and this wisdom and knowledge um, so that they can apply it in their lives help us as you know the host of Biblical practice what we're preaching uh, so that we might not be hypocrites and bring honor and glory to you. Help us always put you first and look to you um, to help us uh, because we know that our help comes from you. And uh, we just thank you for keeping us healthy, strengthening our immune systems during this time. Um, help us to ha uh, develop healthy habits. Um, thank you for every listener and supporter of the show Help them to like, share, and comment. <laughs> Thank you for everyone who uh, tunes in to listen to what we have to say. We ask you to bless them and continue to grow our ministry because this is a ministry unto you. And we never want to forget that. Um, and uh, we ask all these things in the mighty name of Yahushua, your son, our Messiah. Amen. Amen. Come on, friend. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, check us out 
um, I believe temple.com. We post all the shows there. We're here. You know, you can search for previous episodes on Vibelitical. If you just search Vibelitical in your search bar, um, follow us on Instagram at Brandon for Yahusha at Dre. Dre underscore and, loyal on yeah. Instagram. You can follow me on yeah. there. And we'll probably be back for a pop-up maybe Thursday. Mm-hmm. Thursday. Thursday's a good day to pop mm-hmm. up. Probably around 7.30, 8 mm-hmm. o'clock. And we mm-hmm. do need to maybe try to go on Instagram this week. We do. We need to do Instagram first. So we'll probably be on here by 8, 8.15 because we may be going on Instagram at 7.30. Okay. So, but we'll talk yeah. offline about and if you that, forget, yeah, we'll pop yeah, up. And if you too. forget my Instagram, then just go to the website I believe temple dot com, and it's co- all of everything is connected. But I can't remember what Instagram I got on there because I got so many Instagrams. So maybe forget what I just said. Um, send me your prayer requests if you have any of those. Um, I just started studying Amos, and I might be coming on live to study to to have our studies as we work scripture out. Because what I realize is a lot of people don't really study study. Like, and, you know, and, you know, because to study, you got to read, right? You got to read it. You got to read it, digest it, dissect it. To interpret it. it. And, and like, that don't happen a lot. People read a verse and then have an hour conversation about that one verse. But we be, like, getting in-depth studying. So maybe maybe that, you know, will be another live thing that we come up with or something. I'm not sure. But look for that. What? (laughs) Okay. Well, Everett, Maria, thank, thank you. you. They said great conversation as always. Mm-hmm. So thank you for tuning in, Maria. Maria's first time catching us on live. So I'm glad thank she was you, able Maria. to catch yep. us. Um, so come on, girl. Catch us all the mm-hmm. time. Because um, her feedback was really good as yes. well. Um, so yeah. Um, so uh, Brandon said it all. Please like, comment, and yes. share our our, um, our uh, show. Mm-hmm. And um, that's all I got. I don't have anything. So yeah. On that note, thank you for thank watching you. My Political. And until next time, we'll see yep. you again. Love you, Clarice.